Wow, quantum me mechanics is so confusing. It's making my head spin. Hey there, Minjay! What? Who? Who is this? It's me! Petey the Particle! Petey the Particle? I've come to help you out with your homework! Well, right now, like, this spin thing, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. It's so complicated. To understand spin, you first need to understand angular momentum. Come, follow me, I'll show you. Angular momentum is a vector that represents the momentum of a spinning object. You can find the angular momentum by multiplying the radius times the mass times the velocity. Another really important note to make is that angular momentum is conserved as long as there is no external torque. Hey there, Minjay! Whoa, hey there, Petey! Hey, do you want to learn a trick to find the angular momentum vector in any situation? Sure, why not? Alright, now stick out your right hand. Alright. Now, try to imagine a bike wheel or an object rotating counterclockwise. Alright, now stick your hand out. Now clench it as though that was the object rotating. Now see your thumb? The thumb is actually the direction of the angular momentum vector. Cool. That's what we call the right hand rule. So, what's the difference between spin and orbital angular momentum? Orbital angular momentum is when an object rotates around another object. Spin angular momentum is when an object rotates upon its own axis. Electrons combine these and they both have spin angular momentum and orbital angular momentum. Kind of like in here. So, orbital momentum is when an object is spinning around another object's axis, like this, and spin momentum is when it's spinning on its own axis. Minjay! Yeah? What are you doing? Shouldn't you be studying? No, I understand like all the quantum mechanics, especially spin. Minjay, really? Alright, you know what? I'll go back to studying. Angular momentum has three different vectors based on the three different planes of space, x, y, and z, which you can see by the basketball here. The three different planes act as operators on angular momentum, and these operators do not commute. This means when you observe the angular momentum of one vector, it collapses the wave function, and you can't be sure of the angular momentum of any other vector. How are you doing, Minjay? Oh, I get it. So the x, y, z components of angular momentum are not commuting, which means that you can never really be sure of two components at the same time. Perfect. Now I need to get into a little more math. Angular momentum is quantized in units of h-bar. The angular momentum of a particle in one direction is represented by m, a quantum number, times h-bar. The absolute value of m, the quantum angular momentum modifier, is less than l, the total angular momentum modifier. m for orbital angular momentum must be a whole integer number. This means numbers like 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on and so forth. Spin momentum acts in the same way, except that its quantum numbers L and M can be both full number integers or half integer numbers. Half integer numbers are numbers like plus or minus one half, plus or minus three halves, plus or minus five halves, and so on. Zero is not a half integer number. However, if L is a integer number, that means m also has to be an integer number throughout a cross. If l is a half integer number, m can only be made up of half integers. And remember, 0 does not count as a half integer. Try to remember 
the spin for electrons and photons as they're really important. Electrons can only have spins of minus one half and one half. This is commonly referred to as spin up or spin down. Photons can have spins of negative one, zero, and one. Wow, Petey, that's redonkulous. You're right it is, Minjay. But the fact that electrons only have two types of spin leads to some interesting effects. We call this entanglement. We have a particle that we like to call a pion. Now, a pion can have zero spin and zero net charge, but it decays into two electrons which have opposite spin and opposite charge. These electrons enter what we call an entangled state. Because they came from the same pion, and the pion had zero spin, both of those electrons have to have spins opposite of another. Because these electrons are entangled, even if we separate them light years away, they will still be dependent on another. This can allow for faster than light communication. Okay, so the pion is split into two electrons that have opposite spin. Now let's assume Cody and Sarn wish to split up and come back together in one of two locations. Cody has a pion, which ends up splitting into two electrons into their devices. Their devices can tell the spin of an electron. After talking, they decide to match the spin of the electron to one of two locations. Cody is one light year away and he makes an observation onto his electron. This causes a spin to be either up or down. Sarn's electron will have a spin of the opposite of what Cody's electron was. Now, even though that Sarn and Cody are over light years away, information has traveled at faster than the speed of light. This is referred to as spooky action at a distance. Will they meet up together? Looks so! Good job, guys! This only works for the entangled state, however. This time, Cody and Sarn are going to try to use their cell phones to communicate with each other faster than the speed of light. Let's see how that goes. Cody is again one light year away and he tries to call Sarn. This isn't working so well for Cody. Sarn, meanwhile, is reading a book and sitting there when he receives this strange call from Cody. Hmm, what could it be, Sarn? Now, unfortunately, those two, their transmission got a little screwed up from the distance. Now, Saren thinks he's going to go to one place. Better luck next time, Saren. Meanwhile, wait a second. Cody, what did you tell Saren to do? Oh, I was going to meet Saren at Woodman's. Now unfortunately, Sarn's waiting for Cody in the elevator, and Cody's at Woodman's. This isn't going to end well for Cody at all, I don't think. Well, let's see, Cody. Looks like you weren't able to meet Sarn here after all. Thanks, Beanie. I think I'll be able to pass this test. 